Yeah, stupid Linux user as usual tries to use Windows driver error, whatever that is about. Let's plug in our external SSD and give a real man's operating system a shot. So, amazing external SSD to the rescue. Let's see how that is booting. I would expect this to just work as a PCI bridge. Let's see what Linux is doing. And then I think boot menu was maybe F10. Or was it F12? Hmm. Of course, nearly latest kernel 5.05. Let's see how that is going. Yeah, DVI is plugged in there. That should theoretically work if it works. Would not surprise me if the Linux experience is better than on Windows. Let's see. Yeah, brings up the graphic card. So much to desktop Linux in 2019 or long ago, my ass. Slightly wonder why we have the some graphic content though. Would have TV Uno signal. It's probably picking this up as primary card. We probably have two frame buffers now. Yeah. This is funny. The primary zero one is actually the AMD one. Then I wonder why we have a console on both. But the, probably the wonders of. Hmm, I would have actually expected. Why do we even have any graphic? content on that second one though. Hmm. Yeah, so the problem is, as so often with X, not the greatest fan of X configuration, it probably works already with a graphic provider here in X render. This provider is something. Yeah, this is now just, of course, slightly small, could have increased the DPI here. And this is, of course, not providing here raw Deon RX compute here on this just for hybrid graphics without a graphic output though. And yeah, not the greatest fan of the XOR configuration. This is why we do our own low level graphic code here. So either you can use it in this configuration or actually configure it as a primary X server there on the AMD GPU, but then you don't have hot plug obviously and so on and so forth. So yeah, leave me in the comments below how amazing you find this modern dongle setup or if you prefer a full size desktop. We certainly need such a machine for all the testing and such, and maybe I even use it not only for GPUs, but with a PCI bridge for all the other tinkering that we are doing, for example, plugging in there a PCI sound card and such, and then not having to have a external compute node here always open, but when we debug some sound drivers on PCI, just plug it in here with external PCIe there over USB-C slash Thunderbolt, and yeah, certainly in any case for engineers like us a nice setup to have also at 299 again in my opinion slightly overpriced i will do a little bit more testing of this also with max and everything and update you the next days as soon as i have first results and findings until then i hope you liked this video don't forget to share like and subscribe and i hope to see you soon for the next videos to come interesting to know would also be how is the situation in regards to Bridges in regards to PCI bridges, there are quite some PCI bridges there. Probably yeah, IP Enrich 4C and then VGA compatible. Yeah, that is there on device A there. And what else do we have? USB controller, slightly wonder. Should we try to unplug this? Yeah, of course, plenty of USB stuff scrolling by there. Maybe let's be experimental and unplug this here. And we should theoretically get some uh, device disconnected, maybe for the total stability test already, stressing it on the first day because this is how we usually destroy stuff. Let's see if this hot plugs here automatically, but probably uh, does not hot plug the most amazing way as I expected, but here yeah, more testing to come. Yeah, the joy of modern protocol complexity device disconnected so far so good cannot enable maybe USB cables but yeah USB cable <coughs> and it actually detects a new device there vendor device Razer Core X here Thunderbolt but then still cannot enable USB attempt to power cycle so yeah just exactly why we are super fans of dongles and short update regular cheap USB-C cable does not work for Thunderbolt S I tested here and uh, so it is charging and uh, power delivery works apparently on the first look but for 
Thunderbolt data you apparently need here special Thunderbolt snowflake and not Amazon basic super cheap super speed USB ones. Mm. Pity. This is curious. Of course, we did already more testing on the aging Mac Mini here that we use for most of the YouTube stuff and whatnot. Actually, it is a little bit strange with booting. The Intel video output disappears here and uh, then this AMG is taking over. And for what it's worth, it's then uh, not even visible here, not even frame buffer wise. We only have then, for whatever reason, EFI. VGA and not here this uh, Intel driver whatever firmware reason that is that this disappears then but yeah so much to the amazing plug and play and dongle experience.